for number five here, uh, we need to find the biggest perfect square that goes into 45. What is that biggest perfect square? Nine. Yep. So my root 45 is going to become root 9 times root 5. And then we take the square root of 9, because we can simplify that part, the square root of 9 is 3. So it becomes 3 root 5. All right. Number 6. So for number 6 here, the 7 is going to hang out out front. And then we break the 44 up into a perfect square times another number. Seven, seven. And in this case, the perfect square that goes into 44 seven. is 4. And then that's 4 times 11. So then this becomes 7 times 2 root 11. And then we do the 7 times 2, so your final answer here is going to be 14 root 11. Okay, number 7. Now, number seven is a bigger number. When doing something like this, you pretty much start at the top end of your perfect squares and start dividing from there. So, 567 divided by 225. No, there's, that's not divi even divisible by 5, so that's definitely not going to work. Uh, 567 divided by 196. Does that work? No. That gives us a decimal. 567 divided by 169, does that give us a whole number? No. Okay, 567 divided by 144, also a decimal. Okay, 567 divided by 121, no. Okay, 567 divided by 100, no, that's definitely not going to work. 567 divided by 81, uh, now we're talking, right? That one actually gives us a whole number. So then I write it as the square root of 81 times the square root of 567 divided by 81 is 7. And so then we go ahead and do the square root of 81, which is 9, so it becomes 9 root 7. All right, and finally there, for number 8, uh, what is the biggest perfect square we can divide into 63? 9. So it becomes root 9 times root 7, which is then 3 root Seven for our final answer. Now, if you're feeling a little rusty on how to approach this, I'm going to start walking through some of the highlights about what we do. Um, when working this problem through, remember that the very first thing we do in our box is we put the 6x squared, the first term in the first corner, and the last term, the 15, goes in the last corner. We start there, and then remember that these two diagonally, they're going to have to add to our middle number when all is said and done. They're going to have to add to the 19. And so then you enter that guess and check phase. So, for instance, around the 6x squared, it could be 6x and x, because that would give us 6x squared. Or we could be doing 2x and 3x. And we aren't sure which. And basically you're going to have to do a little guess and check to see which one works with a combination of different ways to get 15. And again, the more you do these, the better your intuition is going to become and the more you're going to be able to figure those out. So keep working from there, and then we'll go through it a little bit further here in a few moments. All right, so working this one through, I tend to like to start with numbers that are not as extreme, so I do like the idea of starting with the 2x and the 3x for the 6x squared. So that's where I'm going to start my guessing. And then for the 15, again, I tend not to go for something too extreme. I'm not going to start with the 15 and 1 unless that number in the middle is like really big. So I'm going to start by trying the 3 and the 5. Now when I do that, I have a little trick here to show you. I can actually know from the start that that number is not going to be 3. The reason is because if that were a 3, then in my factored form, I'd have 3x plus 3. Notice I could factor 3 out of both terms in that parentheses. If I could factor something out of one of the parentheses, that would mean there should have been something I could factor out of everything in the original. So actually, we can save ourselves a little bit of work knowing that can't happen just because 
the original, there was nothing I could factor out of that one. Okay, so then if I'm going to try 3 and 5 then, I want to put the 3 over here <coughs> and the 5 here. And remember, this is just that guess and check process. And so then I'm going to see what do I get in each of the corners and see if that gives me what I've been looking for. All right, so 3x times 3 gives me 9x. 2x times 5 gives me 10x. And then I add them up, that gives me 19x. Hey, which is what I'm looking for. So that means we started, in this particular case, with the right answer, the right guess. It's not always that way, of course. Sometimes then you got to switch them around, try different things. But this way it works. So our factored form, the whole point, remember, was to get this answer where we write it down in factored form. 2x plus 3 from across the top. And then down the left side, we have 3x plus 5.